So with factor markets, what we want to know is how is a firm making the decisions about what types of resources to employ, what do those decisions have to do with the type of products that firms are producing, and government decisions regarding the firm. This, this is really pulling a lot of different types of information together. It's not going to be really different from anything we've already done, but there are some nuances here and some new terminology that I need to make sure you understand. So, the first thing to remember is that demand for factors of production, or demand for resources, resource demand is what's called derived demand. Okay, so derived from what? In other words, where do we get this from? It's derived from the demand for the product. In other words, to give you an example, if no one is interested in purchasing diamond rings, then there's no demand for diamonds. So we have to know, first of all, what the demand for the product is before the firm makes a decision on whether or not to bother buying a resource. So that's the first part of this picture. Demand for resources does not exist in a vacuum. It all depends on, you know, what market for the product actually exists. Tying into the idea that demand for a resource is tied to the demand for the product, you have to understand that it's also going to depend on, you know, the firm's choice of the resource depends on the value that the firm can get for the product. And this is going to pull us back to the idea of uh, marginal revenue, marginal cost, but we're going to tweak it a little bit. So, what we dealt with before with the theory of the firm was our marginal revenue equals marginal cost rule. It's very similar to that. What we're going to be doing now, not the same. Marginal revenue product. Okay, this is brand new. So that's the first one. And we also need to keep in mind marginal resource cost. So it's like marginal cost and marginal revenue, but it's going to be a little bit different. It, it's a similar type of analysis. Marginal revenue product is going to equal change, delta is change, in total revenue, and we're going to divide that by the unit change in resource quantity. And I'll explain how all this fits together in just a minute. marginal resource cost, what we want to know is the change in total cost, or total resource cost, focus on just one thing, and we're going to divide that 
by the unit change in resource quantity. exactly are we doing here in layman's terms because this looks like a big messy kind of equation what we want to know for marginal revenue product is how much additional money are we making dependent on the change in the amount of the resource that we're buying if we buy one more hour of labor how much does that increase our total revenue? That would be our marginal revenue product of labor. So that's the first half of this. For marginal resource cost, we want to know what is our change in our total resource cost, you know, incrementally, because we're talking about marginal changes, divided by, again, the unit change in resource quantity. So if we go up by one hour of labor, what does that do to our total cost? If we go up by one hour of labor, what does that do to our total revenue? So just like marginal cost, marginal revenue that we did before, what we want to find in employing a resource, and here we're talking about labor, taking this concept and this concept and putting them together in a nice, easy to follow rule. Rules are good when you have them in economics and anyway. This is what we want. Now why is that? If marginal revenue product is greater than marginal resource cost, then that says, hey, we can keep employing additional units of that resource because we're still making more than we're spending. If on the flip side, the firm says, wait a minute, for that additional unit or five units of labor, we're spending more than we're making, we need to cut back. So the best place for the firm to operate is not where this is higher. You always have a tendency to say, well, they're better off when marginal revenue product is higher. No, because that always says we could be doing better. If this is not the case, if one of these things is higher, then that means your decision in terms of how much of that resource you're buying is skewed in the wrong direction. You want them to be equal. Just remember what these two things mean. Marginal revenue product, marginal resource cost. That's going to be key to this analysis.